thank you so much for being with me this morning. And certainly I hope that you and your family and those people that you care for are staying healthy during these very challenging times. I appreciate the fact that we get a chance to bring you up to date on what we're doing as far as program and services to the communities that we serve in Marion Polk counties. And as important, the construction update of the new YMCA and our Veterans Housing Project. So without further ado, I'd like to visit with you about programs that we're currently offering. Essential care workers are probably some of the most important people that we serve within our community. Those first responders are in need of care so that they can serve us. I have one short, um, some comments, a response that we received from a family that we served uh, during this uh, opportunity out in the Independence, Monmouth Independence community. This summer, the YMCA Emergency First Responder Program was a godsend to this family in need. When our primary daycare was closed due to complications of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were afraid one of us were going to have to stay at home. In this family, both parents are essential workers. With this program, we were able to work and know that our daughters, four, eight, and 10, were safe and healthy. Each day, our kids look forward to going to the white care as well as coming home with stories of what they were learning, like how to plant food. Our girls are better mental health-wise because they were able to socialize instead of being isolated. To their credit, the YMCA has again come through to help families of this community that are in need and give support to keep families going. This program was what we needed during these tough times. This was an essential program for essential families. We were blessed to be able to serve 19 kids over the last nine weeks out in Monmouth Independence. We're actually looking to serve additional uh, first responder care here in the Salem uh, area, and we're hoping that that program will start July 6th. You know, this summer has been uh, uh, not as busy as what we're normally used to but that um, doesn't keep us from uh, continuing to make plans and certainly to engage families and children. One of the most unfortunately consequences of the COVID-19 was the fact that we're, no, no, we're not able to offer our summer resident camp at Camp Silver Creek. We've been at Camp Silver Creek since 1938, with, with, with the exception of the small fire uh, that shortened camp a few years ago. This will be the first year we will not offer Silver Creek summer, summer camp experience to children. And that certainly is, while it's disappointing, we're really looking forward to next year and being able to offer it in the summer of 21. At this time, we're, we're preparing staff for our day camp offerings. Uh, right now, we'll be offering day camp in Monmouth and Independence and in Silverton and Salem. We're currently looking for additional space in our local churches and schools to provide uh, care in a day camp experience for families and those people who will be going back to work. So uh, if you have uh, connections with uh, uh, your local church or where you might worship, please uh, let us know or put us in contact with who might be available as we have to meet the requirements that the state has put forth when it uh, relates to our operations. Small, 10 uh, maximum uh, children in a group, they have to stay together uh, with one counselor throughout the day. So. Uh, while there are many challenges out there, we look forward to the opportunity to engage kids to get them out of the house. The other uh, opportunity we'll have soon, uh, and we'll be offering our sports camps. So with the phase two opening, we'll be able to offer uh, certain camps with uh, specialty sports. Uh, please look forward to um, uh, that opportunity and getting your kids, your grandkids, or whoever uh, may need to be getting out of the house to get outside and get active and be engaged. Also related to Camp Sil Silver Creek is the golf tournament that's been put on uh, for, for many years. Uh, our um, alumni association, the Camp Silver Creek Alumni Association, uh, will continue that tradition of uh, providing a golf tournament which raises funds so that we're able to meet the financial needs of families who are financially challenged. So we will provide scholarships to kids so that they, along with others, can learn uh, that, that camp experience. This particular golf tournament will be held on August 17th. It is a tea time event, it begins at nine o'clock in the morning, and we would encourage you to sign up and to come out and play and benefit kids. Because we know, even though we may not be providing scholarships this year, there will be additional kids who will be financially challenged next year. So there will continue to be the demand and the opportunity to serve more. In particular, I'd like to recognize and really give thanks to our title sponsor, Donna Frio, 
uh, family and um, the Donofrio dealerships. And so uh, we, we are very thankful to have people who are committed to our Camp Silver Creek experience. And uh, Jim Donofrio uh, has been a, a supporter of the Y and experienced the Y and understands the impact that that has on young people. So other bit of news outside of that is certainly there's changes and uh, from this COVID experience, uh, unfortunately, there's unfortunately there are casualties. And uh, really unfortunate is that the Salem Kaiser Education Foundation will be dissolving. <clears throat> and so uh, upon um, learning that knowledge, uh, Kelly Carlisle uh, from SCEF, uh, their CEO, had reached out to me and we started the conversation about moving youth sports, child care and camps from SCEF to the YMCA. Uh, as you might know, we are very familiar uh, with each other in programming and uh, we are really looking forward to this opportunity. Uh, we will be serving 11 additional schools. So we will be serving 19 schools in the uh, Salem, Monmouth and uh, Silverton communities. Uh, there will be thousands of additional youth sports uh, participants. Uh, in the programs. We will be uh, engaging SCEF staff who have been leading those programs to come and be a part of our staff and uh, continue the excellence and the high quality of the programs that they've offered uh, for our community and we will continue to offer in the future. So again, thanks to Kelly Carlisle and the SCEF board in having confidence that we can carry that forward. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, the next thing that's, uh, again, <laughs> exciting this week, we, we closed on the sale of the Ike Box to Isaac's room. We closed on the purchase of the corner parking lot property for First Presbyterian Church. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Josh Kay for the work that he's committed to, to that particular event and making that sure that thing happened. Uh, we're, we're excited. Uh, for Ikebox to own their own property and to uh, be, be free of the rent every month. Uh, we're excited to partnership with the, with the church and what that uh, opportunity offers us when we look at veterans housing and supporting veterans who so much need uh, housing, uh, other, in, other uh, support entities. And uh, so the veteran housing project is firmed up. We have uh, the funding for it uh, with the Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, we've started doing our due diligence, in fact, finished our due diligence on Performa to make sure that it is in a positive cash flow position. Um, we have renderings and uh, schematics uh, as a first run that look to be, a, a, again, a great opportunity. And um, so we look forward to really getting in construction uh, in the summer of 2021. And so thanks to everybody for being a part of that. And certainly uh, it, it's nice to be able to get the veterans housing project moving forward. Well, it's been some, some time since uh, we first learned of the $12 million uh, that's allocated to us through state lottery bond funds. We know that those funds are uh, firm and uh, are, uh, are in place, so we're not worried about losing those. And so, but um, you know, a lot's happened since then. Uh, certainly one of the big uh, efforts was to tear down the old building and then to get ready for a foundation. Uh, what we did discover uh, was that, uh, well, the work's been completed, but not without some challenges. It was more abatement than what we had expected, and additional soil remediation had to occur. So that uh, all cleaned up this past last week. Uh, we're currently bidding the foundation package. Uh, as soon as those bids come up and we award the work for that, we look to start construction this August. And so that's, that's an exciting time uh, to, to be a part of this project. Uh, it'll be nice to start to get some walls going up in there and, and certainly we look forward to opening in the late fall of 2021. Our fundraising efforts continue to be an area of focus as we have $15,774,000 raised to date and committed to the project. We have another $6.5 million left to reach our goal of $22.3 million. We are really looking forward to um, getting free of the, the COVID-19 uh, experience uh, to be able to get out, engage you all as uh, donors, uh, to engage other potential donors, and certainly to get the project underway and opened of uh, December of 2021. So I know um, I had mentioned earlier that uh, we have an ability for you to ask questions if you so like to. And so uh, please feel free to, to ask away. I know some of you submitted 
questions that um, I'm able to read, and we took these earlier on, and so I'll address those first. And uh, please, with your questions, open up. So the first question that we have is, what occurs in the areas for children and youth in the new building? Well, you know, it's not too much different than our old building, uh, besides the fact there's one pool instead of two. Uh, children and families have been a focus of the Y for, forever. And uh, so space in this particular facility, our child watch uh, area is a two, two hour place that parents can drop off their kids and participate in uh, health and wellness activities. Uh, there's another room that's committed to older children where we practice and uh, implement STEM activities, science, technology, engineering, and math. Certainly the pool for uh, swim lessons. Swim lessons are so critical here in the Valley with the amount of water that children have access to. And so we're, we're looking forward to that opportunity. Our gymnasium uh, is always available to youth sports, uh, youth basketball, youth volleyball, uh, and, and other, other activities that kids will want to be engaged with and be a part of. So, you know, the facility has uh, youth in mind. Uh, we hopefully will be COVID free uh, by the time we open and uh, even have some health and wellness activities for the kids so they can stay healthy along with their parents. Will there be Camp Grider this summer? I think uh, that's one of the things that we've, uh, we're currently examining. Certainly there's some logistical challenges with that and uh, ho hopefully we can overcome those and allow kids that Camp Grider experience. Uh, if you would happen to have a relationship with the church in, in our community and help us with some inroad to be able to use uh, church space for day camp activities. Uh, all of our day camps are held within the guidelines of uh, the state and, uh, and so all of our ratios are kept where they're supposed to be and our stable groups are kept in place so that uh, we don't uh, expose our kids or in, encourage, and we want to encourage everybody to be COVID free and respectful of it. The mentions of the pool, it is a, um, it's a four lane, 25 yard pool. Uh, there was a question earlier about the temperature of the pool. Uh, it, it will be warm, but not hot. So it's really not a therapy pool. However, it needs to be kept warm so that uh, young people who learn to swim can be in a comfortable environment. And certainly, and most importantly, is having a warm water pool and the only one in the community, we're able to say, serve those individuals who have physical challenges. And uh, so in order to serve all, we wanted to make sure that that was available for all. Projected start date for the YMCA construction, uh, as I said before, we're hoping to get underway at the latest this August. Uh, we have a 15 month time frame to complete the facility. And so we're looking forward to getting uh, getting some uh, concrete poured here soon. A uh, question was about what's happening with SCEF's old programs like the Austin 3000 and Crystal Apple Award. Well, we continue to visit with Kelly and his staff as they um, uh, look to close down that particular entity, the, the SCEF uh, Foundation. And uh, if there's opportunity for us to be engaged in any of those, uh, certainly we'll be there uh, as the need will exist. We'll continue to um, meet those needs. So um, with, I think if there's any other questions, we're happy to take them. Um, I'm not sure we have some um, comments about the pool. So let's see what it is. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, we can still, the question it was referring to the warm water and uh, how it might affect uh, masters, swimming, and those kind of things, I, I, I think that it will not be a detriment to lap swimmers at all. And so uh, it, it's a warm water pool, it's not a hot water pool. And I know uh, real lap swimmers, those people who really enjoy the pool and like the lap swim, like it a little cooler, but we're gonna find a happy medium where we can serve everybody uh, in a pool that's uh, really pretty special in the downtown community. So thank you all for being with me uh, this afternoon. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Please reach out to me at any time with any questions or concerns. Uh, we look forward to having you when we open the doors in December of 2021. Thanks and have a great day.